See the Ocean by Estelle Condro and the beautiful illustrations are by Linda Crockett Blessing Game. See the ocean. Nellie loved the ocean. She loved going to the beach with her parents and her two older brothers, Gerald and Jammin. Once a year, Nellie's family took the long road that led through the flat desert plains and across the Black Mountains to their beach house at the ocean. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'd like to go there too. <laughs> nice. When she was a baby, they dug a small round dam for Nellie in the sand. She lay cooing in the cool water that came and went. She fingered the grainy sand and kicked and wiggled her toes in the shallow waves that washed into her dam. She never cried when the salt water stung her eyes or when she got sand in her mouth. Here she is, little Nellie. Aww. Gerald and Jammin brought tiny fish in their red and yellow sand pails to Nellie. They collected shells and seaweed and pieces of driftwood for her to touch. Her mother made a beard and eyebrows from the sea foam on Nellie's face, and her father carried her high on his shoulders into the surf. Nellie took her first steps on the beach. She waddled around in a striped bathing suit, stepping on a sandcastle here and slipping and rolling in a sand ditch there. Her skin tanned as brown as the rocks and her hair bleached as white as the sea foam. She fed crumbs to the squawking seagulls. She tossed pebbles in a pool between the rocks and she laughed at the sound. She hummed and babbled her baby babble into the wind. When she could talk, she asked endless questions about the ocean. How old is it? How big? How deep? What's the color? Why the waves? Why the sound? Her father answered as well as he could, and her mother explained with stories. Each year they loaded their car and set out along the road that led through the flat desert plains and across the high black mountains to the ocean where they had their beach house. Nellie never fought with her brothers for a window seat. She sat happily between them in the back seat, dressing and undressing her doll and listening. She listened to them talking and telling about things they passed along on the road. They played games to wall away the hours of their long journey. Nellie never played. First, she was too young. Later, she just wanted to be the scorekeeper. She kept a score in her head, always knowing who won and who lost by how many points. Every year when they reached the foothills of the Black Mountains, another game started and they drove up the mountain pass. Gerald and Jammin leaned forward and stretched their necks and tried to be the first to see the ocean from the top of the mountain. Just a glimpse of the shiny water far below them counted. Sometimes Gerald would be the first one to shout out, There it is! Shining blue between those trees down there! Other times Jammin would be the one to yell first, There! There are the white caps! That means wind on the ocean! Nellie never competed. She just sat quietly, listening to the talk in excitement and feeling excited herself.
One year, as they were driving up the mountain pass, a heavy mist blew in. When they came to the top of the mountain, the mist lay thick around them and across the mountain peaks. It covered the valleys below as far as the eyes could see. No one could see the ocean. You can't see anything in that. But then a soft, salty breeze crept up the mountain and through the open window, brushing over Nellie's cheek and whispering in her ear. And suddenly she said, I see it! No fair! Mother, she can't! complained Jammin. No one can see it from here today, Gerald joined in. But I do! I do! insisted Nellie. She's cheating! She can't see it, complained the boys. If she sees it, let her... Let her tell us what it looks like, said her father. Slowly, Nellie started. The ocean is an old, old man born at the beginning of time. He breathes a loud, salty breath, and his beard blows white on the sandy beach. Fish swim in his long, wavy hair. On his head, he wears a crown of pearls. On his feet, he wears shoes of shells. Sometimes the wind blows in his hair about in big, wild waves, and then he gets angry, and he roars, and he hisses, and he spits. And when the sun shines, he laughs and gurgles and prattles in the rock pools. He smiles a wide, silver and green smile on the beach. On his shoulders, he carries ships and boats. But at night, he's more beautiful than ever. At night, he wears a dark, silvery gray cloak with moons and stars sprinkling upon it. Every night before he goes to sleep, he pulls a soft, misted, misty blanket over himself. That was pretty. That was nice. For a long while, no one spoke. They just looked and looked at Nellie. Then Nellie's mother turned around in her seat and stroked Nellie's cheek. Jammin grumbled, still not fair. How could she see through the mist when we can't? She can't even see, said Gerald. Now, boys, stop that, their father said in a thick voice. And then their mother said, listen and pay attention. Though your sister's eyes are blind, she can see with her mind. Nellie smiled to herself as she thought how very much she loved the ocean. I kept thinking while I was reading this, when you listen, you learn. And when you don't listen, you don't learn. But we all listen in different ways. We all see in different ways. What I'd like you to do is try to understand what it was like for Nellie to be blind and write a paragraph about how things would be different in your life if you couldn't see the sea.